My name is Dr. Yasser al humairi I am a general practitioner and today I will be examining your abdomen which will include me looking, feeling and listening to your tummy. Is that okay with you? Yes. Be sure that no one will be entering or leaving the examination room during the examination. Okay. Next is HIPAA. H stands for hand washing. E, exposure of the patient should be from mid chest to mid thigh. Position, now 45 degrees. Appearance, the patient looks well, he is not in acute distress. There are no signs of pigmentation, jaundice, or cachexia. Next, we should look for abnormalities of the hands using the following mnemonic color and shape in the nails, palms, and dorsum of the hands. In the nails, we should look for leukonychia, and shape is clubbing. For the palms, we look for palmar erythema, and the shape is debutrans contracture. In the dorsum of the hands, we look for tendons and thoma, and the shape is hepatic flap. The patient should wait for 30 seconds, and now our patient will demonstrate a positive sign. Now we move to the arms. Remember, we have skin, so we look for scratch marks. We have muscles, we look for muscle wasting, and we have blood vessels, we look for bruises, petechiae, and spider nevi. Next is the inspection of the eyes. Ask the patient to look up, looking for pallor. Ask the patient to look down, looking for jaundice. And in the middle, for Kaiser Flesher rings. And around the eyes, for xanthalisma. Next, we should check for parotid enlargement, angular colitis. And inside the mouth, looking for atrophic glossitis, dental hygiene, mucosal dehydration, and the smell. Next is the examination of the cervical lymph nodes. Submental submandibular, preauricular, posterior auricular, anterior cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, occipital, and the left supraclavicular, while the patient is shrugging his shoulders. Now for the inspection of the chest, we look for gynecomastia, hair loss, and spider nevi. First, we start with the inspection of the umbilicus, looking for any abnormalities. Then, we inspect the abdomen from the edge of the bed while kneeling and from the side. Do you have pain? Yes. Can you locate it? Yeah. Okay. Can you cough? <laughs> Exacerbation of pain with cough is a sign of peritonitis. Now I'll be starting with the light palpation, away from the painful side. Make sure to look at the patient's face during palpation. Next is the deep palpation. Press during inspiration and move during expiration. I didn't feel the edge of the liver, so I will consider the costal margin as the lower edge of the liver. Now for the upper edge of the liver, I need to start percussing from the second intercostal space and locating it from the sternal angle and the mid-clavicular line. Start percussing until I feel dullness. Then I should measure it. Again, we should press during inspiration and move during expiration. If we didn't feel the spleen, we will ask the patient to turn on our side. This time we'll start from the midline. If we didn't feel it, we can percuss in the last intercostal space on the anterior axillary line. Now we can ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold and percuss again. Use your non-dominant hand to push in the costal vertebral angle and palpate the kidney using your dominant hand. Next is checking for minimal ascites. We percuss just below the xiphoid process. Turn on your side. It should be resonant. If dull, we need to ask the patient to turn on his side and wait for 10 seconds, then percuss again. Next, we should check for fluid thrill for massive ascites. We ask the patient to put his hand in this way. And we should tap from one side and feel from the other side. Next is the auscultation for bowel sounds. Using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, we start with the right lower quadrant, wait for 30 seconds, move to the next quadrant until we cover all quadrants.
Now to end our examination, we need to check for pitting edema, genital examination, anorectal examination, and hernial orifices. Then the RTH. Thanks for watching.